Decide, strange one. Duty or hope? Oh, cool. DLC got announced. Oh, wait. When's it due? Two weeks? Ah, crap. All right, I better get these build videos out before they're obsolete, which is exactly what we're going to be doing today. So, hey there, hunters, and welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. I got one more build video for Remnant 2 before the DLC comes out mid-November, because I'm sure everything's going to get changed after that, but I really want to talk about this one first. So, in the last video, we discussed the Mod Swapper build, and kind of a few iterations of it that all work out pretty well. But while playing around with mods, I found another mod-based build that also worked pretty dang well, but it just didn't fit the swapper archetype, and that is Dots. Of course, I had already previously played a DOT build, but now I can play with Stone of Malevolence, and I found a setup that actually does pretty respectable damage. So this is a hybrid DOT and mod build, which is pretty dang fun to play in my opinion, and I was having quite a blast, well, blasting away enemies. So on that note, this build I'm going to be calling Star Fuel. The core principle of this build is that we're going to be using Stone of Malevolence to generate a lot of mod power, and we're pushing all of that into Star Shot so we can constantly use full 5 charges on Star Shot as much as possible. To do that, we're going to be using all sorts of dots, most of which are elemental, to generate a ton of mod power thanks to Stone Malevolence. And then we're going to be scaling our dots as much as possible, and because Star Shot also applies to Big Fire Dot, we can safely scale our dots and not lose out on too much of Star Shot's damage. So let's go over the gear for this build. As always, we're going to be starting with the archetypes, and because we're using mods quite a bit, of course we're going to be using Archon for our primary archetype. While we don't necessarily need the mod damage that this archetype provides, we do definitely need all the mod generation. The second archetype is actually up to you. You can run Summoner for the mod power, Challenger for the damage, weight, and crit, Medic if you want better survivability, or even Explorer if you want. Really, we're only using the secondary archetype for the damage bonuses, which of course any archetype can fulfill. While I do like Challenger because of Juggernaut, so we can just get some stagger resistance if we happen to hit ourselves with Starshot, as well as the extra weight for more armor, you can also use Summoner, which is nice for the added mod generation of the summons themselves, but also you have to be careful because if they die, you're going to lose out on a lot of your damage for a little while. And because we're going to be using Starshot, there's a good chance you kill him yourself. Next, of course, is the armor, and it's dealer's choice as always. You can use whatever you want. I think medium weight is fine for this build, but you can go heavier if you're going to be running the Challenger. And then the Relic, again, dealer's choice, you can use whatever Relic you want. I do like the Reprocessed Heart for the extra mod generation. And for the Relic Fragments, they're going to be the same as they were for the mod build, so we're going to be doing mod damage, elemental damage, and reduced mod cost. Our traits are also flexible, but of course you absolutely need Spirit. Kinship actually isn't all that mandatory, because as long as you don't spec into Amplitude, your Starshot AoE shouldn't be too big, so you should be able to avoid it most of the time. But of course, you can go for kinship for co-op or overall comfiness if you're going to be using summoner. Now, we're going to talk about the weapons before we go into the trinkets. Now, obviously, we're revolving this build around star shot and fueling it. Our mutator here almost doesn't matter at all because the 20% mod damage mutators don't affect our dot damage at all. It's just the initial shot of star shot, which is kind of minor damage in the grand scheme of things. So you can use either harmonizer or feedback. Now, I do realize that feedback is only going to refund you an amount of mod power equal to one charge of star shot, not all five. But the mod damage conversion is still nice. For our melee weapon, it kind of has to be Krellax. While you could technically get away with using Smolder for a fire dot, the duration of the ignite is rather low, so you do have to be meleeing a lot more often to keep that up. Plus, if you're in melee range applying your dot, you're not going to be able to use star shot, so it's best to keep at range and use Krellax to apply overload. We're also going to be using the new Stormbringer Mutator on this to make all of our dots stronger. Your long gun is entirely up to you, use whatever you're comfortable with. I go with the Bone Saw because basically I won't ever have to reload with it, as I can generate enough mod power to sustain the Corrosive Rounds mod pretty much indefinitely. So yeah, Corrosive Mod of course, because we don't have Corrosion from Nebula. I'm also using Twisted Rounds on the LMG, which will be applying Corrosion and Bleed now. Do note that Bleed is not an elemental dot and does not generate extra mod power for us through Stone of Malevolence. So for our weapons, we're going to be using Fire with Starshot, Overload with Krellax, Corrosion with LMG, and Bleed with LMG. I do want to use Time Wave on Starshot, but its range is far too low to be using with Starshot, so instead I'm going to be using the Bubble and the Archon for slow when possible. You could also technically put Time Wave on the LMG or whatever your long gun is, and use that to sustain your slow as long as you're close enough, 
but at the same time you also won't be able to constantly spam it because the duration is only seven seconds whereas your mod's gonna be up for 20 so the uptime is gonna be really just kind of wonky so again i'm using archon for slow so that's kind of our weapon setup and the dots that we're applying and with that out of the way let's talk about the trinkets so for now yes i am still using energized neck coil i know the trigger does not always work and it's very inconsistent but I do hope it will be fixed soon before this DLC comes out, but even in its current state, it does provide amazing ad clear potential for us, and that's pretty much enough to warrant the slot. For the rings, of course, we're going to be using Stone of Malevolence because that's our conduit for this entire build. We have Sin String as well for a 10% multiplicative damage modifier to burning targets, which they should pretty much always be on fire. And so this is going to help all of our damage a pretty good amount. And then we have the Ahane Crystal, which grants us all damage based upon the number of statuses applied to the target. So with four active statuses, we're going to be getting 20% damage bonus from basically one ring, which is pretty awesome, and 25% damage if we can sustain slow as well. Do note that two of the same dots do not apply a stacking bonus. So if you have three active fire debuffs on the target, you're still only getting a 5% damage bonus from this. So you have to get one of everything. And then lastly, we're going to have the Timekeeper Duel, while not a direct damage boosting ring, the double status duration also helps give us room to actually use Starshot without having to constantly cycle our debuffs the whole time. So it's just there for comfiness. But also, because we have bigger dots, it makes our energized net coil hit larger as well, when it decides to want to work. So with all this together, the general flow of a boss fight is to basically start with a grenade for a nice minute long bleed, and then we dump our statuses into the boss by shooting it with a Starshot, hitting it with a Krell Axe, and then dumping some LNG ammo into it. And then we go back to Star Shot and then just kind of cycle Star Shot and some other dot reapplication. Again, while not the most optimal DPS, it does have a very intricate rotation, which feels pretty good to play when it actually pays off. And all the damage numbers spewing out of the boss always keeps the ADD in check. During ad clear for bosses and zone progression, the energized net coil kind of hard carries all the clearing, but you can also swap to Star Shot to basically one tap any elite. So there's really nothing to worry about there. This setup for a dot based build definitely feels stronger than the older just pure dot spam build, but it is harder to gauge to DPS because Starshot always throws you out of the target dummy space. But even so, using it on bosses feels pretty good, except for the bosses that like to get up into your face such as Ravager, just because Starshot will kill you. But otherwise, yeah, it's pretty smooth sailing. So if you're into dots, I'd definitely give the Starfuel build a run for a bit, and I'm probably going to be using this one for the DLC at launch to be honest. I do hope by then though the Energized Net Coil gets fixed and we do get some other dot things to play with. Anyway, that's going to be all for me. Thank you all for watching and thank you to my Patreon members. Always appreciate you guys. I'm going to be back with more Remnant content when the DLC drops, but in the meantime, if anyone wants to talk shop about Remnant or gaming in general, feel free to join my Discord in the description below. But yeah, thanks and good luck out there, hunters.